Hi. Uh, today we continue what we started uh, in the previous lesson regarding motion in two and three dimensions. What we talked about so far, we took the case of motion in space of an object which has its own acceleration. Acceleration x, acceleration y, and the acceleration total. So the object itself has its own acceleration. Today we'll talk about a special case or an applications of motion, which we call it projectile motion. It's still it's motion in two and three dimensions, but projectile motion. What's projectile motion? Projectile motion is motion of an object under gravity influence. When you have the gravity affecting the motion, we call it a projectile motion. And this motion is in two dimension, in a plane of x, y. It's like you have the pen in your hand. You throw it not vertically up. This is one dimension. You throw it at an angle. So when you throw it at an angle, it goes and come back to the same level or a, a level which is below. And this motion will be in x and y, two dimensions. So projectile is an example of motion in two dimension. Uh, let's say I have the x-axis this way. This is the x-axis. And this is the y-axis. This is a space of two dimensions. And I have an object here, like a stone or a missile or whatever. And you want to fire it or throw it at an angle. So you have to give it an initial velocity. This initial velocity is a vector, v naught vector this way. And this is the angle of firing, theta naught. Now, if you do this in space, what happens usually? This object will go straight forever. Because there are no other forces acting on the object. But if you, do, you throw an object while you are on Earth or any planet, like the moon, or what happens? Because of gravity, and gravity is which way? Downward. So here you have gravity this way. So instead of going straight, it will go in an arc up and back. Yeah? So the force of gravity will have an effect on the shape of motion. It will not go straight. Arc. This is what we call projectile motion. Projectile motion. So what is a projectile motion? It's motion in two dimension in a plane under the influence of gravity. This is the definition. Motion of an object in a plane under the influence of gravity force only, no other forces. So here, in a projectile, we have gravity force only. When we say gravity force only, we mean there is no air resistance. No air resistance. So this means no resistance. Because if there is air resistance, what we'll have? We have the force of the wind or the air. Eh? It affects the motion. So here we take the ideal situation. One force only, the force of gravity. Now, what do I want to do here? When you study motion, it, remember you talk about the five things which we know. Initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, displacement, and time. So we want to measure these things for an object moving in two dimensions under the influence of gravity. If you remember the previous lesson, what, what we did, we said whenever we have a motion in space, we create a table, motion in x, motion in y, and motion in r. Because here we don't have z. And then we list the five items, and we look at these items. So if I 
regenerate the table here again. The first column is motion in x axis or x axis motion. Here, the x axis motion, we call it the horizontal motion. Horizontal motion relative to the ground, horizontal. The y axis motion. Here we call it the vertical. Before, we didn't call the x horizontal, y vertical, because we were talking about something in space. In space, you don't have vertical and horizontal. You, you don't have up and down, right and left. But on Earth, or on a planet, yes. Horizontal, parallel to the ground, vertical, perpendicular on the ground. And here, of course, we have the R, the combinations of both. Now, if we list the five things we know, we have Initial velocity in x. What else? Final velocity in x. Acceleration in x. Displacement in x and time. Of course, here we have the same five. Initial velocity in y. Final velocity in y. Acceleration in y. Displacement in y and time. Now, when you combine these two, what do you get here? Initial velocity vector for these two, yeah? When you combine these two, final velocity vector. Acceleration vector, displacement vector, and time is the same, right? And underneath each, there are the equations of motion. If the acceleration is constant, the three equations of motion. We'll come to them later on. Let's go back to this example. Let's number the points. This one, point number one. Let's say when it's here, this is point two. Here, point two three. Point four. Point five. I take five points on the motion. When you fire it, this is the initial velocity vector, V naught. Velocity, we said this before, it's always tangent to the path. So where is the velocity at two? Tangent to the path, the vector. At three, tangent to the path. At four, tangent. At five, tangent. These are the velocity vectors. Now, according to this scheme, when you look at the velocity vector, you can see it's between x and it's a vector, which means it has component, x component, y component. So for v naught, what are the components? I have v naught x, and v naught x here, I can consider it as v naught cosine theta naught, yeah? Because this is the angle. And it has what here? V naught y, which is V naught sine theta naught. Two component. When I go to this point, if I put a small cross x and y, this will be Vx at point two and Vy at point two. Here, if I put x and y, Vx, where is Vy here? Zero. At this point, at the maximum, Vy equals zero. Now, why Vy is zero? Because it reached the? And we said this before, when an object reaches maximum y, it means there is no velocity in y anymore to take it up. When it reaches a maximum x, it means you don't have velocity on x, so it stops, yeah? At four, Again, we have Vx and, and five, Vx and Vy. This angle, 
theta naught. It's the initial firing angle. Can you see here? There's an angle between V and Vx, theta. This theta is not equal to this theta. You can see it changes. How much theta is here? Zero. Zero. Here, where is theta? It becomes below. Yeah, as well, theta. So point 0.5, point 0.4, point 0.3, point 0.2, point 0.1. Now, what I did here, instead of dealing with the velocity total, which is an R, I broke it to horizontal and vertical, X and Y at each point. Now, think X now. It means here. Yeah? What you have, initial velocity in X, final velocity in X, acceleration X, delta X, and T. If I want to follow the horizontal motion only, what I should do, let's say you have a light from a projector from the top only, light. in a dark room, and you just have light from the ceiling, yeah? And then you fire this object like that. What you will see? You see the image of the projector, or projectile where on the floor, yes? So what I'll do here, it's like you put a screen. I put a screen here on the floor. Of course, this is the floor, but I'm just shifting it. Now, if there's light coming from the top, this point has an image here, yeah? This is point one, the image. When the object here at point two, where is the image? Here, point two. Here, three, here, four, and here the image is five. Now, if you repeat the action, looking at the floor, what do you see? You see a spot moving which way? Horizontally, yeah? straight line. In which dimension? So this is the horizontal motion of the projectile. Now, the image, when it's here, it's moving this way. Yeah? What is the velocity this way for this object? V not x, not V not. Just the image. So here, the V1 is V0 cosine, which is V0 x. Add to Vx, final velocity in x. Add 3, Vx, at 3. Here, Vx at, and here, Vx at 5. This is the final velocity in x only component. Now this is similar to an object moving on the road, yeah? Think of it as a car. What's the initial velocity of the car? V naught, cosine, theta naught. When it reaches point two, what's the final velocity? Vx. When it reaches point three, Vx three. Vx four, Vx five. Right. On the horizontal direction, this way, on the projectile, is there any force? Is there a force here, pushing, pulling? No force, yes? So horizontally, no force. If you have an object moving with a velocity, and there is no force applied on it, pulling it or pushing it, what happens to its velocity? Stays constant, which means how much is the acceleration? Zero. So do we have acceleration on the x-axis? No. This is the first conclusion. In a projectile motion, when it comes to here, how much you put for Ax? Zero. Zero. Why? Because there is no force. But if you have air resistance, it's not zero. But we are taking the ideal situation, Ax is zero. 
Now, if the acceleration is zero, what can you tell me about V naught X and V X? Which means what you can tell me about initial velocity and final velocity on X? Equal. They do not change. What is V naught X in this question or in this example? V naught cosine. What shall I write here for Vx? Same as V naught x, which is V naught cosine. So those two are equal. I write it here. In a projectile motion, V naught x and Vx always equal. So V naught x equal Vx. All projectile motions. If you don't have a force horizontal, V naught x and Vx are equal because the acceleration is zero. What is left? Delta x and T. Now, what are the three equations of motion for constant acceleration, which we list here? You remember the three equations? OK, but here we're talking about x only, yes? So what we say, velocity final in x equal initial velocity in x. And what is initial velocity in x here? V naught cosine theta naught plus axt. Second one, Vx square V naught cosine theta naught all plus 2ax delta x. Third one, delta x, v naught, cosine theta naught multiply by the time, plus half acceleration in x, t squared. Yes, you remember the three equations of motion, general. This is for general x, but let's apply them here for this column. How much is ax? Zero. So what I have to do, this becomes zero. This one, this one. Okay. When this is zero, what does it tell you? Final velocity in x, what is it? Uh, Equal to initial velocity in x or not? And that's what we said. So what you see here in this equation is this, or these two. Second one, when this is zero, what do you have? Final velocity in x squared equal initial velocity in x squared, remove the squares, same. So these two are the same. What is left? Third one. When this is zero, what is delta x? V naught. Cosine theta naught multiplied by? So what should I write here? Delta x equal to what? Equation, yes? It's a fixed equation. V naught. Theta naught multiplied by the time. And this delta x. In this displacement. So do I need these equations anymore or remove them? So for a projectile, you don't need equations for the vertical, for the horizontal. What do you need to know? One equation, delta x equal v naught cosine theta naught multiplied by time. And what else? This is statement. Initial velocity and final velocity are equal. We finish the horizontal motion. So no equations, no need. Don't make the silly mistakes of, of using the equations of motion here because there's no acceleration, ax is zero. Now we come to the y. <coughs> if I go back to the drawing now, this time, where shall we put the light projector to see the vertical motion horizontally? So if, imagine there is light coming this way. And here, there is a, a screen. When you fire the object, what do you see here? The images, yes? So this point one, it has an image here, point one. Point two, the image is here. Point three, the image is here. Point four, Back to the same level of? But what's the difference between two and four? 
When you look at the screen, what do you see? You see an object going up, I mean image going up and reach maximum then going down. That's the image on Y. So the difference is this. Here the velocity Y is down, but here the velocity up. Which velocity? Just Y, not total. Here, five. And here, this is V not Y, initial velocity. So what does this tell you? That on the vertical, you have an image going up, maximum back, yeah? Now, on the vertical, do we have a force? What's the force? Gravity. So it means, do we have acceleration or not? We have. So when we have a gravity, and, which means we have acceleration on Y. So here, the velocity vertical is, are equal or they are changing? Changing, yes. This one not equal to two, two is not equal to three. Keep changing. Similar to a free fall, when you throw the pen up. It's not similar to this one. So when you throw it, what's the velocity? V not Y. It decreases, decreases, stops, and then increases back, yeah? What's the acceleration? Gravity, acceleration. So on the Y axis, now, I have the three equations for Y. What are they? Final velocity where? In Y. Equal? Initial velocity in Y. V not Y. But what is V not Y? V not sine. This is V not Y. Now, what's the acceleration here? AY, yes? How much is AY? Minus gravity, yes? Minus 9.8, because it's down. So when I put it here, the AY becomes minus and the time, yes? This is the first, look, this is the free fall or not? Except that you have sine. Before we didn't have an angle because the angle was 90, sine 90, one. So we had just V naught, yeah? Second equation, final velocity in Y square Initial velocity in y square minus 2 g delta y. Third one, delta y. Initial velocity in y multiplied by the time minus half g t square. Exactly the same equations of free fall, except you have sine theta, because you are firing at an angle, theta naught. So what shall I put here? Uh, v naught, sine theta naught. This one is the Vy, which you find here. Yeah? Delta Y is this one. And time is, okay. Now, if you have initial velocity in x and initial velocity in y, what is the total initial velocity vector? It's v naught cosine theta naught i as a vector plus v naught j. This is the initial velocity vector. Of course, if you want the magnitude, you square the component. Now, final velocity in x, final velocity in y, what is this? Final velocity vector. How do you write it? Final velocity in xi, final velocity in y. This is important, this one, because the question is this. As example, we say, what's the, what's the speed at 4? When we say, what's the speed at 4? It means you have to find the velocity at? How do you find the velocity at four? What do you need? Final velocity, yes? You need final velocity in x, final velocity in? Which means you need these two. And then you take the square of the components to give you the magnitude, the speed. Now this line, what shall I write here? 
zero i minus g t uh, g j nine point eight delta r means delta x delta y yeah delta x i now this is important as well because what's the question here find what displacement from origin now on the graph it means Let's say I start at 1, finish at 4. Where is delta r? This vector delta r. How do you find delta r? What do you need? You need delta y and delta x. How much horizontally is four from start? How much vertically the four from the ground? Yeah? So this is how far, how far from origin. And of course, the time is the same. Yeah? We have to find it. Here, you don't have to use the th equations for r. Yeah? Because most of the time, you work on x and why? And when you combine them, the question usually is about V and delta R. And if it's about T, you already know it here. Yeah? And these are initial and final. Right. So let's summarize what we did now so far. If you have a question of a projectile similar, similar to this one, you break the motion to two parts, horizontal and vertical. When you work horizontally, what do you have? One equation only. Delta x equal v naught cosine theta naught multiplied by the time between the two points. And you have one statement. What's the statement? Initial and final velocity in x are equal. Nothing else. No equations. Don't use any equations except this equation for horizontal motion. Vertically, what do you have? Three equations of motion. What are they? The motions of free fall, except you have now an angle of firing, theta naught. That's it, yeah? And then you combine them. This type of, yeah? Uh, when the object cross uh, point three, what? the D will be positive, right? What is it? The D? Object. What is D? No, the object cross uh, point three. Yes. Uh, D will be positive, right? D? G, G. Ah, okay. Okay, 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 I understand. Which way is the gravity? Always or sometime? Okay. G is a vector or a scalar? Vector. So it has a direction down, yes? Now, if I want to draw G here, which way is G? Vector, yeah? Here, where is G? Here. So at point three, which way is the g? Down. Down. Which way is the velocity? Down. Tangent, yeah? What's the angle between them? 90. 90. But here, what's the angle? Is it 90 or more? Here? More. Here? Less. Less. But g always? Down. Down. Yeah? Is that clear? So that was your question? Yes, Rami? Okay, so. Okay. In the equations of motion here, can you see what is it? Theta naught? Yes, theta naught? Not theta. Theta? Theta naught means it's the first angle only. Theta naught here. Initial firing angle. Not this theta, or this theta, or this one, yeah? Just the, at what angle you started with? Firing angle, throwing angle. Right. Now, what else? This, by the way, this way of firing, we call it symmetric. Symmetric projectile motion. 
symmetric. Why symmetric? If you put a mirror here, don't you see this side? Same as this side? Mirror image, yeah? So they are identical, identical, both sides. That's why you call it symmetric, yeah? I don't need this because this will make it a bit hard to follow. <clears throat> In this type of projectile symmetric, we ha I have two special points which are of importance. This point, point to three, it's an important point, and point five, when it hits the ground. At point to three, where is the projectile? Maximum height, yes? So from here to there, what is it? Delta Y from one to where? To three. And this is what we call it H max, maximum height, H max. At H max or delta Y max, what happens? How much is VY? Okay, now remember. If you put VY equal to zero, it means you're talking about this point, VY is zero. So in these equations, when I put VY is zero, what does that mean? I'm doing calculations between one and three. One and three, yes? So this is the first point, which is important, H max. If I remove the R, because I don't need it at the moment, let's uh, apply this. So if I say from point one to point three, from start to the max, what do I know between those two points? Vy is zero, yes? This is vertical or horizontal? Which means you have to work on this column, not on this column. In this column, what do you have? Three equations. I have Vy in the first, I have Vy in the second. Now if I take the second one, of course you might say, why not the first one? Because I'm after H max, delta Y. So I have to use the one which has delta Y. So we have Vy square, V naught, sine theta naught, square minus two G, Delta Y, this is the general equation. Now apply it for one to three, how much do I have to put here? Zero. This is V naught square, sine square theta naught minus two G. What did I call Delta Y? And remember, H max means Delta Y from one to three. Now what is H max equal to? If you take this one to this side, and then you divide by 2G, you will have V naught square sine square theta naught over 2G. What's this equation for? To find what? To find the maximum height if you have a, a symmetric firing. This is for symmetric only, for symmetric only, if it's non-symmetric, no. H max cannot be found this way. Now this will be given in the formula sheet, but remember, this is nothing special. You just put Vy equal, it gives you H max. Where is the second point which is important? Point number, when it hits the ground. Can anyone tell me vertically about five, what do you know? Vertically. Where is my starting point? Where is the end point? Five. What do you know between one and five? You have the five terms. What do you know? Something is well known between one and five. Well done. Delta Y is zero. This is the key. Because you are at this level and back to the same 
So when you put delta y equal to zero, it means you're doing calculation between start and the end. Regardless of the point, because I, I can number them differently. One, two, five, seven, yeah? Start, end. When you want to talk about the start, end, you must put delta y equal zero. Where is delta y? It's in this column, yeah? Which equation is delta y? Second and third. Now, I take the third one. Why I take the third one? Because this time, because I use this for H max. Now I want to include the time element, time element. So take the third one. From one to five. What do we know at five? One to five, delta y is zero. So one to five, Delta y, 1 to 5, is 0. Taking equation delta y equal v naught sine theta naught t minus half g t square. I put delta y 0. v naught sine theta naught. Which t is this, by the way, now? Which time is this? One to five. So this is one to five. One to, this is the total time. Think of this as equation number one. Is this not ready yet? Equation number one. Now, let's go back to one to five, but this time I want you to think horizontally, not vertically, horizontally. If you say from one to two horizontally, what do you mean? You mean this delta x, yeah, displacement, yeah? If you say between one and three, you mean this displacement. If you say from one to five, all. Because it's all, this is delta x max maximum displacement or maximum distance the same because it's straight yeah there's no turning this delta x max we have another name for it we call it the range capital r range so when we say range what do we mean the horizontal distance from start to the end yeah okay this r is to do with horizontal motion or vertical motion? Delta x, yes? So let's go to the column horizontal. What do I have in this column? One equation, one statement, yes? Think of this equation. What is delta x equal to? V naught cosine theta naught t, yes? Now, if I'm doing calculation between one and five, but this time horizontally, yes? What is my equation? Delta x, yeah? Which delta x? Max, which is r equal v naught cosine theta naught multiplied by which time? One, two, five. Think of this as equation number two. Equation number one, equation number two. This is vertical, this is horizontal, but 4.125, five, start to end. What is common between those two? What is common? Time. So we, I have to solve them to eliminate the time, yes? The easiest way, if I take this equation, I'll use this space, I keep the H max. What is T equal to from this equation? T 
1 to 5 is R V naught cosine theta naught, yes? All right. Now, can I substitute this equation in this equation number one? Each t replace it by? So this one, if I replace it here, and then the t square, a bit of math. I will not do that because this is mathematics. You'll end up with equation for r, range. You'll find r will equal to v naught square sine, be careful here, 2 theta naught over g. What's this equation for? To find the range, maximum delta x. This one, maximum height. When do you use these equations? Only when you have symmetric, only. Non-symmetric is not allowed because I concluded this based on this firing. Now, the question by default will come is, how come this is 2 theta naught and this equation is theta naught? This equation is theta naught. This equation is theta naught. Yeah? You have theta naught, but here, twice theta naught. What happened? Where is the math here? If you go back to what you learn in algebra and trigonometry, there are some identities. One of the identities is this. It says, whenever you multiply a sine of an angle, any angle, but here my angle is theta naught, yes? Multiplied by a cosine of the same angle. Multiplied. And a twice of it, twice of this, yeah? Two multiplied by this, this is always equal to Sine twice of the angle. This is an identity. This is so useful in math because if you have sine multiplied by cosine, you can remove them and replace them by one, but double the angles. Or the opposite, if you have double, you want to break it to half, yeah? So this is what we did here. When you put the two equations, you find something like that. We remove it and put sine to theta. So we came up with this equation for range. Okay, this way, now I think we finished the symmetric projectile motion. Now, if, if we go back quickly, what we have? Horizontal motion, delta x, yeah? And a statement, those are equal. Vertical, three equations, free fall, but with the sine. And what else? Range and maximum height. Done. Do you have any question now about this one? Clear? Okay. Now, just one more point here. Yeah. Whenever you use this equation, you always must start at point one. But you finish where? Any point. Two, three, four, five. Before, if you remember, when you say the start and finish, start, you could be start at point three, finish at five, yeah? Here, don't do this, because it puts you in trouble. Why it puts you in trouble? If I say start at two, initial, final at five, yes? When this is your initial, what is the firing angle here? Is it theta naught? Or is this theta? Do you know how much is this theta here? No. But I'm sure that because you don't know, you use this theta not in the question, yeah, which is wrong. Usually the question, you know the initial firing angle, yeah? So that's why you stick to this as an initial always. But your final, no, maybe final two or final three or final four or final five, whatever. But your initial always point one, starting point. So you don't fall in this problem. Another point is this, this point. If I ask you, what's the sp speed at point three? What's the speed at point three? 
What would be your answer? V naught sine theta naught. Good. Don't tell me zero. I say, what's the speed? I didn't say, what is the component vertical? If I say, what is the vertical component here is zero. But you, remember, you have horizontal Vx. If you say the, the, the velocity here or the speed is zero, what does it mean? It means it, it flies and it stops here. Because when you say speed is zero, it means it stops. But will it stop here or continue to the other side? Right. Now, what should we do now? Uh, or actually before that, this equation of range. Range depends on what? Look here. Depends on initial velocity and the angle of firing, yeah? Which means if I increase the speed of firing, what happens to the range? And this is what happens. If you, if you want to throw a stone to a bigger range, what you have to do? Increase the speed of firing, yeah? yeah? The higher the speed, the bigger the range. And remember, it's square, which means the effect of speed is squared. What else you can do? Of course, this, you have a limit. You can't just increase the speed. You reach your limit. What is the other uh, element which can increase the range? Angle. What is the maximum value here you can get? One, yes? Because sine cosine has a value, maximum one. One means, what's the angle here? 90, 90. All of it is 90 because sine 90 is? So what's the firing angle? 45. This is very important. Whenever you want to throw something to a maximum range, you have to throw it at? At 45, you can get the maximum range. And that's why we try when we want to do a, a long jump. You try to leave the ground with 45 to get a maximum range. Yeah? If, you get, if you jump below 45, range is small. Above 45, small as well. At 45 is the maximum range. So this equation is very important in projectile motion. <clears throat> what else here? What is delta y at 2? Is this one, yeah? This is delta y between 1 and 2. What is delta y here? 1, 2. What can you tell me about delta y? 2 and 4. Same. Same. Which means for each delta y, you have two answers. One before it reaches the max, one after. You should know that. You have two valid values. One before, one after. Now, I want you to look at Vy. Vy before the max, which way? So it's positive, yes? After? Negative. Before max, after? Max. What about Vx? Always positive and always fixed. Doesn't change. Because we said the initial and final are the same. They don't change. OK. Now, what I'll do here, I list all types of projectiles we deal with to start with. And then we discuss them one by one. I'll keep those because I need them. Now, what are the possibilities to throw an object? The first possibility was this, the symmetric. You fire, angle theta, it goes up and come back, yeah? We covered this. 
everything. What is the second possibility? You fire, you throw an object from a height. Like now, if I have a, a machine gun or a pistol and I aim this way, yeah? or up or down. Am I on the ground? No, above, yes? Now when I fire, the shape of the projectile will be symmetric or non-symmetric? Non-symmetric, yes? So the only symmetric is this. The others are non-symmetric. So it means don't use R and H except in this case. Okay, so uh, briefly, what is the other way? Let's say this is the ground. The object is here and you fire it. What are the possibilities to fire it? You could fire it horizontally, yeah? If this is a target, you're aiming at this target, yeah? Will it hit the target if you aim horizontally? No way, because the projectile, you hit below the target. At a distance, yeah? This is the second way. This is V naught. We'll come to it in details. I'll just show you all this. So this is the second type of firing. Uh, the third way of firing is, this is the ground, still from a height. Now this could be a building or just open, yeah? Like my hand is open, but you could be on top of a building and you throw something. Now, the second possibility is that you throw this object, not horizontally, below horizon. And this is horizon, this is the angle of firing, yeah? So if you throw this way, it will not go straight, it goes as a projectile. So this is below the horizontal or horizon. The fourth one, above horizon. So if you are here, this is the horizon, you fire above theta naught, it goes up and back to the ground. So whenever you have a pro problems or projectile, first think, is it first, second, third, or fourth? If it's first, you have the advantage of these two equations plus three plus four, this one, yeah? Same table. But if it's one of these, remove the R and H max. Now you might say here I have H max, no. This H max doesn't mean that H max. That H max for symmetric, it means this part only. This is H max to the same level. But here you have an increased here, so this is the H. What I want to say here, don't use that equation for this type of projectile. So now I'll go to this case. We look at it in details. So I'll redraw it. I give it the title horizontal firing, which means you fire exactly with horizon, not above, not below. If you fire horizontally, it means the ground is here and the object is here, above. Which way is the velocity initial? Parallel to the ground. When you say horizontal firing, you must know what is the firing angle. How much is the firing angle here? How much is theta naught? Zero, this is the key here. Because you're firing this way and this angle is zero, not above, not below. So here theta naught is zero. Of course, if you fire this way, will it go straight? It goes as a projectile. <clears throat> This is H, yeah? The height between point one and point two. Let me take a point here. Which way is the velocity here? Tangent here, tangent. This is point two, point three, point one.
Now, if you have horizontal firing, let's see what happens to these equations. Let's look at the horizontal. This is my equation for horizontal, yeah? Do I know what is theta naught? What is theta naught? So what happens to this equation becomes delta x equal v naught cosine 0 multiplied by ts, which is v naught t. Because cosine 0 is 1, yeah? This is horizontally. What about this? Cosine 0. So v naught x equal? So here, v naught x same as v naught. And what about v x? Same as v naught, yes? Doesn't change. Those two are always equal. Equal. Or let's put the equal here, sorry. This is horizontally. Now let's look vertically. These are the equations vertically. Do I know how much is theta naught or not? If I fire horizontally? Zero, yes? This is sine. Sine what? Sine zero. Sine zero. So this term disappear, yes? This one disappear. This one disappear. What is left? What is Vy equal to? Minus g. So you'll end up here, horizontally, uh, vertically, you'll end up with Vy equal minus gt. Yeah? First equation. Second equation, Vy square equal minus 2g displacement. And last one, displacement equal minus half gt square. When do you use these equations? If you fire horizontally, if the angle is zero. Now, these equations are important, like in discussion. Time, positive or negative? Positive. G. No, here it's positive because it's already changed. Why we put the minus? Yeah? So now what you put here, minus 9.8 or plus 9.8? Okay, this happens in the exam, by the way, some of you. You have the equation minus, and you put g again, minus 9.8. That's wrong. Because if you put this one minus, and you already have minus, it becomes a plus. But g is not plus, it's a minus, negative. Okay, so this is positive, this is positive. So what is vy then? Positive or negative? Always or sometime? Always, yeah? In this case... The vertical velocity is always negative. Look here. Where is Vy here? No, here is 0. V not y here is 0. Because sine. But here, what is Vy? Down, negative. Here. This is important because when you solve, and if it happens, you find Vy positive. In this case of firing, it means there's a, uh, something wrong with the signs. You, you substitute it, uh, the wrong sign. Take the second one. Vy square. Something square. Something square, is it possible that it's equal to a negative? No way, yes? Now look, look at this side. G is positive. This is negative. Delta Y, if you put it positive, what happens? You'll have Vy square negative, which is wrong. So this way of firing, what is delta Y? Always negative. So in this way of firing, Vy always negative, and delta Y always negative. Now, look here. What's the proof that delta Y is negative? If, where is my starting point here? This is the initial, yes? Where is the final usually? Above or below? At point two, below. At point three, so where is delta y? Between one and two. It means this part. Between one and three, where is the delta y? 
it's all of it, yeah? And both cases are what? Negative. Down. So don't forget that. Vy and delta y always negative when you fire horizontally, yeah? Last one, T square positive, G positive. So what is delta Y always? And that's what we say. That's the proof. Okay, so if you have horizontal firing, remember your equations are these, yeah? No. Just put zero for the sine theta, and delta X becomes V naught T because this is one, and those are the same. Do I have H max here? Do I have range? No, no. this is non-symmetric. Don't call this R. This is wrong. This is not R. This is delta X, normal delta X, between 1 and 3. Let's change now the way of we fire. This was the case number 2. Case number three. Below. You fire below the horizontal line. So think of this as the ground. And the object is here. This is horizon. You're firing below horizon. V naught. So this is the firing alpha, yeah? Of course, it will not go straight. It will go as a projectile. When you fire below horizon, alpha here, this is the angle given, yes? We say 30 degrees below, yeah? 30 degrees or 40 or 60. Yeah? Now, when it comes to here, where shall I put the angle of firing? Here? Yeah? yeah? Theta naught is the firing angle. Here, don't. Look, I put alpha. I didn't put theta naught to tell you there is something here. If you put the angle given there as theta naught, in this sign, you'll make a mistake because when the angle is in the fourth quadrant, this is in the fourth quadrant, yeah? The sign is positive or negative? Negative. But if you put 30, 40, the calculator will give you positive. So what you should do when you have this type of firing, the first thing is change this alpha to theta naught. And theta naught is 360 minus? Alpha, and use this in your angle as a theta naught. So if we give you alpha, don't use it. Use theta naught for firing. Now, do I have to change anything here? No. Theta naught, just that one. Use this equation. Here, same. No change. But what do you expect Vy to be if you fire this way? Positive, negative, or a mixed? Positive or negative or both? Negative. negative. Always, yeah? Why? Look here. Here, which way is Vy? Not down. Here, down. Here. So it's the same as before. Vy always? Negative. What about delta Y? Always negative because you start here, but your points are below. So delta Y always negative as well. So this one similar to the horizontal firing, but the angle is not zero. So it's the same equation. What is left? 
the last way of firing, yes? Above horizon. This was below, so we change it to above. So what your classmate missed this way of firing, yes? When I finish the class, just tell them how they to find theta naught. Right. Above horizontal firing. This is the ground. Let's say you are here at a height. Now this time you don't fire below, you don't fire horizontally, you fire above. And this is theta naught. What happens? The object will go up and then back to the ground. Is this symmetric or non-symmetric? Non-symmetric. Which means I don't have H max, that one, and R range in the equations, yeah? I have an H max here, but you can't use this equation for H max. You can't use the H max equal V naught square sine square theta naught over 2G. Because this is for symmetric. <clears throat> now, in this way of firing, is there something special like Vy always negative, delta Y is negative, or it's a mixed? Vy mixed. And delta Y is mixed as well. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're doing calculation between point 0.1 and point 0.2. This is V, yeah? This is Vy. This is Vx. At, from 1 to 2, Vy, final velocity in Y, positive or negative here? But if you do between 1 and this point, what is Vy? Negative. negative. Here, of course, is negative as well, Vy. So there's no such a thing here, the Vy is negative or positive. It depends on which point. Before the max or after the max, yeah? Now, what about delta y? Is it positive, negative, or both? Both as well. Now, look, between 1 and 2, where is, where is delta y? It's this, yeah? Is it positive or negative, this one? Start here, finish there, above, yeah? Positive. But if you do between 1 and 4, where is the delta y? From this level to this level, which means it's the height of the building, but negative. From one to where? To four. You start at this level, you end up at this level, negative delta one. So nothing is special, okay? So these are all the types of uh, projectile motions which we have. Uh, the extra examples which I solved it's on the blackboard, I put them back in the old uh, folder inside uh, uh, updated review problems. So you have to find them there. Extra examples on chapter four. Uh, one example is about firing uh, symmetric questions and answer. The other one firing horizontally questions and answer and some more. You need to practice before it's too late, because next week we'll have midterm exam on Tuesday. Chapter one, two, three, and four. So you have to be prepared. Now I'll stop at this uh, point, and I'll give you the exam uh, paper to discuss. Thank you.